Honourable members, I want to welcome you to this afternoon's sitting. And uh, just a kind of reminder that from the day I gave my directive, today is the fifth sitting. And uh, we'll invoke Rule 112 of Rules of Procedure as far as leave from the House is concerned. And this goes to all the members. Whereas we are cognizant that some members are absent, of, uh, absent from the House, I'm yet to receive individual letters. And I'm saying individual letters, asking for permission to be out of the House. It is strict liability, not vicarious. We take personal liability who we voted in individually, not as a team. So I am here to receive letters from persons who are absent from the house formally. And then I will either formally give permission or not, depending on the circumstance. And if members have decided to be out of the house, then that means they should also not be in the committees because a committee is an extension of the house. They should not, and I'm, this one goes to the clerk, nobody who is out of the house should be allowed to travel because you are not in the house, you are not part of the house, you've decided to be out of the house so you don't enjoy your rights that you're supposed to get in the house. We are going for East African Games. That will start on 7th of December. And as these games start, there are people who have deliberately decided to excuse themselves from the house. But they will want to go and represent the parliament in, in Kigali. So I am also telling the chairman of the sports club in parliament that those who are out of the house must be got out of the list. Whether they are goalkeepers or what. They should be gotten out of the list. Because if you, if you cannot be in the house, whom are you going to represent out there? You should be able to represent your house first from here before you go and represent it from, uh, from uh, East Africa. So let's have those people out. And I want also to ask members who are in accountability committees, where you have a chairman, a missing chairman in the committee. I want you to invoke Rule 203, five of the rules of procedure for you to continue transacting and then elect a member within your committee. I am giving you power to so elect a member within your committee. Because if you have a Busenti chairman, I, we cannot continue doing without to chairpersons in the committee. So elect your chairpersons in the committee. The rules allow you to do that. I have also got information that some friends of ours, our colleagues, come and clog in outside there and go back. That is, it's about integrity. Hmm? I am going to print that list of members who have clogged in stayed out there and pretend to be in the house. And I will publish it in the newspapers. I will publish those, those names of people who don't have integrity. You're either inside or you're not. So they should come to the house. Nobody chased anyone out. Come back at will. Free entry, free exit. So please come back at will. 
Let's not pretend to be in when we are not in. And we should be accountable for taxpayers' money. Taxpayers' money. I heard the Rastaman saying we are paid how much money per day. We should account for that money by being in the house. Let's account for that money for being in the house. Now, if we don't, if we are not in the house, you voted all the way from Bukhet there to be in the house and you're not in the house. So where are you? Honorable members, and they, those who go to the social media, to TVs, radios, attacking me over what I'm supposed to do, telling you to be in the house. Don't waste your energy because I'm now immune. I'm immune to your attacks. All I want is people in the house to do the work that you're sent to do. Be productive. You're here to serve the nation. So if you cannot be here to serve the nation, <laughs> then uh, the rule will apply. And when they take, we discipline one person, we are not disciplining a party. It will be a personal liability. Honorable members, over the weekend I was driving around. I drove around Kampala and you could see how the town is littered. I was even surprised that someone was driving ahead and he threw a bottle of water outside. I think people need to learn a discipline of how to keep our town clean. And now that the rains have started, the lot of the issues of climate change are a reality. Roads are getting blocked. Water is stagnated everywhere. The bridges are breaking down. There is also a lot of corruption in terms of uh, planning, fiscal planning in the city. I think we need to be responsible enough for us to make sure that we have a good city, a good country, and ensure that as representatives of the people, we take a lead in preaching the need for environmental conservation. We take a lead in ensuring, I want to, I am waiting for a report from the Committee of Infrastructure on the flooding in Kampala of how people are building in the trenches. We are waiting for that report. I hope we are getting it this week. We want that report. It is just in discipline that people start building in, in the trenches. So I want to welcome all of you members and thank you for coming. I'm happy, Anita. You have come, you're trying to cut the 15 days off. <laughs> thank you so much, members. I wish you a nice deliberation. Yes. About, uh, specifically about the absenteeism, maybe your directives also should extend to the canteen. And, uh, <laughs> but also, right on the speaker, the general person of sports that you are directing to remove others from the list is part of the absentees. So you may need to appoint an acting chairperson in the interim for now. Thank you very much, Rotary Speaker. Uh, since I'm the patron of the sports, I will take an action immediately. <laughs> Tom? Speaker, forgive me this chance. Uh, Madam Speaker, we practice the British Commonwealth uh, parliamentary system where there are supposed to be two sides of the house. And uh, the word parliament comes from the Greek word parle. Parle means to speak, speak, talk, talk, and speak. And if there are contentious issues on the floor of parliament to be debated, it must be debated by both sides of the house. Now, if the members of the person are not going to be here in the, in the house, 
how shall we really debate and come out with the you know good points for the development of the country uh, so what, please what do you understand by opposition we have opposition they are here this is the le the left side of the party of the house is opposition most obliged madam and, speaker and i want to tell you members look the issues that are being raised were not caused by parliament executive is the one supposed to answer so we as parliamentarians we are supposed to be here to wait for executive and hold executive accountable but now when we parliamentarians run away whom is the executive going to respond to because for them they will say we have a report who is going to receive yes uh, I want to thank you for your communication. I think that uh, it is very clear. Out of your communication, Madam Speaker, the country's GDP, majority of it comes from here in Kampala. Madam Speaker, in the last one week, it is almost very difficult for business, for people to move from point to point. To move from Buya to the central business district is almost impossible. It's taking many hours. There is a lot of infrastructure works going on. But one of the good practices when you are doing infrastructure development around cities is that there must be continuity in terms of the flow of traffic. Madam Speaker, what is happening is that there is a lot of delays and it is impacting both the business community, but also government. Because if you have to move a container of goods from industrial area to Nakawa for taxes to be assessed in today's situation, you will find that it is almost next to impossible. So, right honorable speaker, we want the prime minister here to tell us, these contracts that you have signed with contractors should end part of continuity, free flow of traffic, be part of that so that we have a seamless flow. We are approaching Christmas, Madam Speaker. Many people will be traveling. The situation will only get worse. So I would like to, through you, Right Honorable Speaker, to government to assure us about the continuity measures they are putting in place to make sure that there is continuity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, this is my first time to see you, and I have to congratulate you upon receiving those bouncing babies. We pray for them one time to come and sit here and sit there in that chair. Right Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Member of Parliament is talking about the continuity of working on the roads. I wanted to get him clear. The continuity of traffic as we work on the roads there should be continuity of traffic movement of goods and services from one point to the other because you find that they, as they work on the roads, the traffic is at a standstill. They cannot move. And time wasted in business is money lost. Right, Honorable Speaker, uh, we are giving alternative routes as the people continue working on the roads they were giving alternative routes for traffic, for the flow of traffic. So I request members just to be patient and bear with the situation because the cars are too many, but alternative routes are being given. Thank you. It is to liaise with the KCCA and see how best it can be handled. Traffic. Thank you. Thank you. It should not be actually members to know. The public should be the one to know. Because the public is the one that is mostly using these roads. Honorable Bianima. We must be patient for these inconveniences. Instead, it's good to open up other routes that can help access Kampala, which, don't, which are very bad in, in a bad state. Otherwise, we can't have these people working during the day because they can't work at night. It's not, not easy. Even through Kampara, to see what is happening within Kampara. And hard was moving in the countryside with committees. 
which was very, 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 very good. Because you get to know, and when we are speaking here, you know, you draw the picture. Not only a speaker, I'd like to invite your attention also and your effort. To also, as you drove through Kampara, to jump and drive into the further countryside, Buko, Sebei. I can actually give you a better context from Bukedea because it is in a rural area, a village constituency, that actually the, all the bridges are broken down and need to be worked on. So uh, it's not that I stay in Nakasura alone, but I'm a village girl. I stay down there in the village. Uh, yes. And uh, we continue to delight in your leadership, in particular matters to do uh, with our country. Madam Speaker, on 1st November 2023, uh, there was a headline uh, story from the Daily Monitor which indicated that as a result of uh, research conducted by the Ministry of, uh, of Health, they had found that 30% of Ugandans were mentally unstable. 30%, Madam Speaker. Graphically speaking, that means one in three Ugandans are mentally uh, disturbed. Madam Speaker, this reputation has implications on our nation's ability to... Uh, where is Honorable Macho? He's not in, yes. Madam Speaker, clearly this is a very, very serious matter that has implications on our ability as a nation not only to attract our friends, sponsors, funders, and so on, but the image of our country is at stake. Is it possible, Madam Speaker, that the government really comes out and issues a statement that really addresses this matter to its core, Madam Speaker? Thank you. Madam Speaker, I also want to take this chance to congratulate you uh, upon attaining the title of Nalongo. Some time back, General Otafira had said that you should leave uh, the Fox, Honorable Fox is here. Fox, if I had gone by your advice, I would not be having the Nalongo. <laughs> So I think, Madam Speaker, Honorable Foxes will take the, the joy we have attained from that act. I want to thank you on your statement and also communication. My submission is related to the issue of uh, construction on, on, uh, on the trenches, as well as uh, the swamps. I think uh, people who are put in positions of responsibility should take responsibility for their inactions. When you move around, you see structures coming out on swamps. And these structures, whether in a municipality or a town council or a city division, these are supposed to be approved. So I wonder why somebody should approve construction of a structure in a swamp area. And these swamps are supposed to act as a reservoir a storage for water. When you look at most of these areas that have been flooded, the challenge is that much of the water that should have been stored in the reservoir, which is the swamp, cannot go there because the swamps have been claimed. Many times we come here, we get reports. Ordinary rural people having their food crops that can take around three months being slashed. We only saw seriously in terms of fighting degradation of the swamps in the rural areas. But when it comes to the city, we sigh away. This is a double standard. We have always had communication about growing rice in the swamps, advising citizens not to grow rice in the swamps. But Madam Speaker, if you go around, in some of these rural areas, there are foreigners deep in these rural areas who are growing rice in the swamps. I had a, a trip with a friend who wanted to buy land in a place called Chichusa in Luero. When we moved with him, I was surprised that Indians had established very large rice farms in the swamps. investor who was encroaching land in Bukedea, between Bukedea and Blambul, 
and taken and they are growing rice massively and is a swamp. That is just one of them. Honorable Zima has talked about another and it's all over the whole country. Namave. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. One, I know this is my golden opportunity also to say something. That I gave you good luck. Mine are many. Triplets, double, double. Hey, and therefore, Kabarole calls me Mama Wawana. I wish you the same luck. Thank you. <laughs> now, going to the question, right honorable speaker, we need serious interministerial approach to this matter. Because, one, we as local governments, yes, we are the custodian of all the people and what's being done on the land. But we have a fully fledged ministry which was authorized by law to cancel any title in the wetlands. So that's where Ministry of Lands comes in. And we've also learned of very many positions of investors given authority by NEMA, which is also wrong. So I wish to compare all the ministries through the Prime Minister to give a stern instruction of why titles in the wetlands are not cancelled, yet the Ministry is authorized to do that. Otherwise, as local government, we pledge to continue doing our work, and law is law, right, Honorable Speaker, so let the law speak. I thank, thank you. you. Honorable members, members with issues on, uh, on wetlands should uh, have reports submitted to to local government, and then the minister, the, the prime minister, should constitute an interministerial committee to look at all those areas, and we give us a report to that effect. Much obliged, right honourable. How much time do you need? Right on about two weeks. I'll give you one month. I'll give you one month. Hey, Honorable Chinovere. Uh, thank you, Right on The effort was a. It was a. The cause of all this is corruption. The source of all this is corruption. Because they decide. There is information from the chair. Uh, right on speaker. Actually, Kampala Metropolitan or the Greater. Regional Speaker, thank you for driving around. And I would like to invite you to dedicate one weekend of Saturday and Sunday and move around Kampala. The issues we are talking about, Regional Speaker, the issues we are talking about are not about to end. The minister is here. I didn't want to preempt many things. The confusion in Kampala Capital City Authority, <coughs> it is entrenched. And, and one thing I should tell you that I drove alone without security, without a lady car. And I took four hours, four hours, four hours. It is entrenched, uh, right on the speaker, the confusion. You sit with Kampala Capital City Authority. Everyone is looking at the other. No one knows exactly what is happening, right on the speaker. He's here, he's the minister. Yesterday I was with him. I can tell you this matter is not going to be solved until we put a pressure, a lot of pressure. If we examine the six billion, if we examine many other things, the minister can give us a snapshot. He's also, he told us clearly yesterday that he's also... When he reached there, he said, I don't know. <laughs> right on a speaker, there is a problem with Kampala Capital City Authority. We must crack the whip. Or else we accept that we shall be talking, and it will be talking, and nothing will happen. Thank you very much, right on a speaker. Stark, tell us about Kampala. 
Tell us about Kampala. You said you don't know. Right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, first of all, I thank you for giving me my young brothers, the twins, now I'm called Chigongo. However, I don't think that I said I don't know, because I know, but the challenge is the level and uh, magnitude of your knowledge matters a lot. Because when it comes to issues of finances, I will confess that I don't know. Because I don't control finances. There is somebody who controls finances, and I also wait for accountability, because my law stops somewhere, and then somebody responsible, that's the game. Of course, we received the six billion, which was made for potholes. And indeed, Honorable, right, Honorable Prime Minister, we can't submit this. But you know when you get something similar... I am not a Prime Minister. Similar, I'm not a Prime Minister. I'm sorry, right, Honorable Speaker. But the challenge is, six billion was like uh, a drop in the ocean. You may... I will submit a full honorable, report on this. Honorable Minister, right, honorable a drop in the ocean shows what you have done. You give me space, I will submit this at an appropriate time. Because I did come with a detailed account a bit of how the six billion was utilized. But for us, uh, we want to see value for money. Don't tell us we worked on this road when they are not when it is not worked on. We want to see value for money. If you've gone punching, punching, punching in the potholes, let's see the punch potholes. Right, Honorable Speaker, you give me an opportunity for that, I will submit at an appropriate time when you say so. Okay. But on the other hand, for Kampala, of course, we thank you who are here. You gave us some funds to do more roads and more other infrastructure challenges like drainages in the whole of Greater Kampala metropolitan area. Also, the processes are underway. Now we are at feasibility studies, finalized the feasibility studies, and this will take care of about 300 kilometers of roads within Kampala and metropolitan area. And at the same time, you are aware there is already a facility still which you approved here of 288 million, which process is being ongoing, and road instruction, construction is ongoing. The challenges we are now seeing right now is that we expect to have a baby who is not yet due. We are now in the phase of construction of certain areas, and I think that's why you get a bit of challenges now. Especially when you, you drive around some roads, are, are closed, some roads, works are ongoing, so you may get discomforted when you're driving in Kampala. But at an appropriate time, you allow me I come here and we present a full report on every on the status of what's going on. Thank you. Uh, Chair, since you said we should crack the wave, can we have a report from your committee? Thank you. Uh, you talked about what uh, Honorable John uh, Mosila talked about Parliament. That we get two million shillings every sitting. That whenever we come, we get an allowance of Two million shillings, and indeed we do not actually we, we don't he get. He withdrew. The, he withdrew that. He withdrew. He withdrew and apologized. So, Madam Speaker, through you, I wanted to mention it again because some people might not have seen that. That really we don't Honorable get two Musila, million every Honorable, day. Honorable, Honorable, Honorable Musila withdrew this. Every member is congratulating Ben Along. But without a salongo, right honorable speaker, the title Nalongo would not be there. I request that uh, as we congratulate the Nalongo, some uh, congratulations should equally go to a salongo. It's, uh, right honorable speaker, they're asking where salongo is. The, the <laughs> 
Right, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, my concern you in your communication you talked about the East African Games. Right Honorable Speaker, we have some games that are indoor and it's raining heavily, whereby these games can only be played indoor. We have one facility which is Rugogo Indoor. Currently, right honorable speaker. One facility belonging to the government of Uganda. Yes, going to. Which has been given to some. Oh, right honorable speaker, this facility belongs to the government of Uganda. Whatever we do is in the interest of this country. Thank you very much, right honorable speaker and honorable colleagues. First of all, I would like to say that I'm not aware of the facility of sports being turned into a church. And Madam Speaker, I would like to ask that you give me a few minutes. I cross check with the responsible officer who is the General Secretary, National Council of Sports, then I report back. But to my knowledge that that facility is busy, it has also other games. As you are aware, that there are quite a number of the indoor games. And sometimes we try to, to give time to specific game beginning 6 a.m. up to almost 9 a.m. Honorable Minister, don't plead ignorance. The church hired that facility. It is, on, it is all over. It is on social media. It is all over. The members of parliament even took pictures. It is in this forum, parliamentary forum. So what you need to do is to go and talk to the general secretary and let the facility be used for what it is meant to be used for. Madam Speaker, I really want to go on record as a Minister of Sports that I am not aware because... Okay, can you go and confirm and then come confirm, back? Let me confirm, then I report back. I thank you. We are giving you five minutes. Uh, Dr. Chris, you should be the one to weep. Because I... Because we are sitting for two hours. You see, my doctor... Uh, just, they... just an interruption, members. We've, already, we've had enough of the roads. And we have given an assignment. The report is coming. We'll continue the debate on the roads when the report comes in. Uh, let's discuss something else within. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, you've talked of waiting, moving around, and spending four hours. What does that mean to us? Every day we come here, I know, and live here going back, many of us spend the same hours that you spent maybe moving around Kampala. Just a few days ago, I spent three hours listening to news three times from Lugogo up to the next petrol station, the Shell, the junction towards Nakao. Listen to news three times. And that is what we call waiting in motion. That one is calculated for you to understand and know how much you've lost if you are to put that time into productive activity. And also, Madam Speaker, we don't need to take this lightly. I have had opportunity to interact with some leaders, especially from entities responsible for roads in this country. It seems even some of the works that are being done by KCCA maybe are not coordinated with other entities. I found one leader who was asking, why are they again interfering with the junction uh, 